Ladies and gentlemen, good evening everybody. There's such a lovely buzz here this evening. It's full of, I suppose, joy and full of um, everybody <coughs> meeting each other, many people for the first time. We have, we have uh, columns here from Australia, <coughs> from the United States, from England, and from all over Ireland. And I know there are many more going to join us later on this evening in the backstage theatre and indeed over the whole weekend. And indeed, this is a very special occasion for many different reasons. And I'd like to begin by welcoming each and every one of you, and particularly all the members of the Column family who are here this evening and have helped to make, to shape this programme for us. Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted and honoured to welcome all of you to the Chamber of Longford County Council this evening. As for here, like a proud North Longford man, I, along with my fellow council, I am delighted to be hosting this reception to mark the official opening of the first Pori Cullum Crenu. We in Longford are very proud of Pori Cullum and his wife Mary. They were extremely extraordinary people who left a great body of work behind them. Pori wrote poetry, plays, essays, children's stories and biographies. It really, really is wonderful to be here um, to celebrate Pori Cullum, to celebrate the man, to celebrate his life and to celebrate his work. Today, uh, both Mary and I spoke about Pori Collum, and we, we not coined the phrase, but we described him as a prolific author. And indeed, um, in the final years of his life, he emphasized the importance of his childhood in Longford. And this was uh, transparent in all his writings. And it's something that holds very dear to my family, as my dad, Kieran Collum, uh, is from <coughs> Longford, uh, as are the extended family. And I suppose when Mary asked me to say a few words, um, and we talked about the Crenu, what I did, what, what this, the catalyst, I suppose, for me was to go back and look at his work um, and to really look at it with, through a different lens. And I suppose just to think in terms of poetry alone, um, the, the, the differentiation between Pori Collum's writings and his contemporaries really was that his work, and I quote this word, was readable. He used simple language. However, through the simple language, he explored such complex themes. And that has transcended today. If you take a poem like Old Woman Off the Roads, if we look at that simply, that is a poem about a woman wandering the roads, um, longing for, for a home, for a house, for some turf, for a fire, for a hearth. Um, and again, that theme transcends today into the 21st century, uh, as the children of Machna Cliff had rightly pointed out, towards homelessness and what a theme that is. So if we just take a second even to reflect upon simple language with a complex theme going from uh, the 20th century right up to today's and hopefully into the next generation. I'd like uh, the members of Lanford County Council to come forward because we have, especially because this is the first occasion, we've pr produced a little scroll for every member of the Column family, just to remember this weekend, and hopefully that it will be the start of many more. <laughs> The retired Bishop of Arden and Clonmac Noyes, and I'm extremely happy to be here tonight because we're honouring somebody who means a lot in my life, because I come from the same townland as the Cullums came from, and um, I have great memories of the family when they were my next door neighbours. So all of that is being brought together now, and of course this man, this outstanding man of letters, he's well deserving. Of what I, to you. I never met him personally, which is one of the regrets of my life, actually. But um, I, I, I knew a lot of people who knew him personally. But that's not as good. I would love to have been able to say that I knew him personally. But I know him through his, his writing. I suppose that's most important now. Uh, Pori Cullum. <laughs> I always say Pori Cullum, but we always used to call him Uncle Patrick. He used to come home uh, most of the winters when I was a young child in the 60s and he stayed with my Aunt Susie in Ranella. 
and eat bears that be fed out in our house. So we saw quite a lot of them at that time. And this is where uh, my mother came in. That's my mother, little child. And Uncle Patrick had a great influence on the family always, because even though they left quite early to go to America and then they were in, in, in France and everything, they kept up their links. <laughs> but sometimes he would, because he'd suddenly remember one of his theories, that wasn't a literary one, that um, a cigarette would help your digestion. So when he remembered that, I would be allowed to get down from the table, run around to the shop and buy two cigarettes and bring them home so that he could smoke them. So my memory of him is that. Aww. And you can see the black hair. Earth savage, earth broken, the brutes, the dawn man there in the sunset, and the plough that is twin to the sword, that is founder of cities. Brute tamer, plough maker, earth breaker, canst hear? There are ages between us. Is it praying you are as you stand there alone in the sunset? Surely our sky-born gods can be naught to you, earth child and earth master. Surely your thoughts are of Pan, or of Wotan, or Dana. Men of the fields, men of the valleys, men of the seasons and the soil, strong hearts and hands, molding the lands all over earth they toil down in the fields nine in the morning days work three hours done care for the corn care for the cows care for the land we need and i think it's fantastic that Longford County Council and the people of Longford start to recognise the great writers, authors, poets that we have in the county and to showcase the rich history which we have in the county. And I think this is the first, the first weekend of what will be many and will, I think will build into um, something fantastic over the years that will bring people from all over, not just Ireland but the world, to Longford to enjoy the rich heritage that we have. two gentlemen to admire this new hall, this new extension. And of course we stood up and we made a courteous Fauci Now one of the men I recognised and the other I was absolutely astonished to hear was Pori Cullum, the poet. Now like Franz said earlier, I was astonished for like him too, I thought long ago that all poets were dead or long dead. So here was a small well-dressed man in a grey suit with a soft voice, and he pleaded on our behalf because Mr. Patrick asked us to name some poems or 
that in pouring column had written and we were all sitting there with our mouths open and not much coming out. And he said, don't press them, don't press them. So one or two said, uh, the old woman of the road and a cradle song. And then suddenly I remembered Blue Book and I tore like mad, whirled the pages and I waved my hand and I said, the drover. And Sister Patrick was very happy, pouring <laughs> smiled. And later that evening, I wrote on the margin of the page, Met Pori Column today, the 12th of May, 1958. Oh, so I just read the drover for you this evening. Uh, well, my name is Peter Sean Collum, and I've come from Australia. Uh, my grandfather was uh, Podrick Collum's brother. So that makes me his great nephew. Uh, yeah, so my father was John Collum, and my mum's travelled with me. She's 86 next birthday, um, and she's travelled with me from Australia, and we've, we've made a big trip of it, actually. We've gone all down through England and Scotland, and now we're in, in uh, Ireland. So uh, we're having a great time, and uh, oh, look, the people are wonderful. Uh, yeah. you kind of say to yourself or it's very personal this one needs to be performed and there is no better place for a Longford writer to be performed than in this wonderful theatre and the next party columns like Luke Cassidy who's in the audience today this is where we're going to find them in a place like this uh, and I don't know what party column would have made of it when he was here but this is the place so this is the Book of Kells the short version <laughs> by Pori Cullum. First, make a letter like a monument, an upright like the fast held huge stone immovable, and half rimming it the strength of behemoth his neck bone, and underneath that yoke a staff, a rod of no less hardness than the cedar wood. Then, on a page made golden as the crown of sainted man, a scripture you enscroll, blackly, firmly, with the quickened skill lessened by famous masters in our school. My name is Marina Moroni and I am uh, here because my grandmother, or my mother's mother, uh, was the first cousin of Pori Cullum. So my mother's mother was Bridget Cullum. And uh, I grew up all my life hearing about Padre Cullum and the stories and the poems that he wrote. So we're here just to celebrate his work and we're very proud of him. No pipe did harm 
It's my fear that my wake won't be quiet, nor my wake house a silent place. For who would keep back the hundreds, who would touch my breast and my face? For the good men were always my friends, from Galway back into Clare. In strength, in sport and in spending, I was foremost at the fair. In music, in song and in friendship, in contests by night and by day, by all who knew it was given to me, that I bore the branch away. Now let Manus Joyce, my friend, if he be at all in place, make smooth the boards of the coffin they will put above my face. The old men will have their stories of all the deeds in my days, and the young men will stand by the coffin and be sure and clear in my praise. Okay, so my name is Miriam Collum. I'm a cousin of Pori Collum's. I'm a daughter of Kieran Collum, who's a, his dad. My granddad was first cousin of Pori Collum. And we're here uh, to enjoy the show. So these are my nieces. What's your name? Jennifer. Jennifer and... Beatrice. says, I would do anything in the world for a creature who would find my swan skin for me. The king says, hello. The woman says, oh, hello. I'm looking for my swan skin. The king says, I know. The woman asks, do you have it? The king says, yes. She says, ah. The king says, I'm sorry. She asks, who are you? And what do you want? The king says, I am the son of the King of Ireland, and I want you to show me to your father's house. She says, I would prefer to do anything else for you. He says, but I do not want anything else. She says, okay, okay, but you must never let my father know I showed you the way. The King says, I will not tell him you showed me. And she also says, he must not know that you are the King of Ireland's son. He says, I will not let him know who I am.
Tell me there's nothing in Longford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and since 1981, I have always thought that Porricon was the third leg of the stool of the literary canon that is Longford. And I think we have planted that leg into the stool here tonight and I look forward so much to tomorrow as well. Padraig lost his job in 1888 and went to America. <coughs> Padraig's mother was Susan McCormack from County Cavan, and the small boy lived with his aunt and her husband while the father was in America. So between the ages of six and nine, he lived with his aunt Mary and her husband Mickey Burns in Malignan, a few miles south of Cavan town, as you know. Through traveling around the countryside with Mickey, who was a poetry dealer, young Padraig developed a great understanding of rural life, and he seems to have developed a great love of the traditional stories and songs that he heard. So as a young boy in Longford, and then later in Cavan, hearing the songs and ballads from the old people, it had a great effect on the young Padraig, and played a major part in his becoming a world-renowned author and folklore. It's from 1960, and before singing two of Padraig's songs, John Feeney asked Farley how he came to write them. The songs are She Moves Through the Fair and Shall I Go Bound and You Go Free. Now, there have been quite a few articles written about She Moves Through the Fair, and uh, how Padraig got the inspiration and where, etc. and I wrote one of those articles myself. Uh, but this is a very short piece, and we hear Padraig himself state how he came to write it. And then we hear Jack singing just the first verse, and that's how we'll end. Padre, what's the story behind the two songs that I'm singing today? How did you happen to write them? Uh, she moved through the fair, and shall I go bound and you go free? These were written for music that the authority on Irish music, Herbert Hughes, collected in cottages in the county Donegal and the county Derry. I was able to put a good deal of my own imagination into them, because I went with Hughes to the cottages and heard the music played on the fiddle by some old man or woman, and so got the sense of tradition and background. After being in the cottages, he would sit at the piano, play the tunes over to me till I got the sense of what the music meant. My young love said to me, my brothers would mind, and my parents
born on the 8th of December 1881, baptized the 9th of December 1881. Parents Patrick Cullen and Susanna Joan Horn. Days Worth House Stanford, baptized by Father P. B. Godparents Christopher Cox and Rose Cullen. And you know, this is the sacred space of our not in the cathedral. And I've met lots of groups here, and one of the things that I always call attention to is that I don't be most in the middle of the floor because it's a prayer. And you know, I always start here with that because it gives me a chance to uh, ask people to be quiet for a moment, prayerfully present, and that the Lord helps us to where we are, and it's here that the Lord will touch us in some way. To understand this series of stations for meditation on the way of the cross, it must be remembered that there are two contrasting methods of presenting any scene in the life of our Lord. One considered it as an event in time and, and, and set forth as conceived what actually occurred. The other seeks to give the expression to a truth which is equally true at all, in all times and in all places. The first method, if exclusively followed, tends to become unspiritual and merely realistic. Second, actually, the stream of mystical treatment might lead to vagueness and unreality. Tend to make the report forget that the event ever really took place at all. Recent art usually presents religious objects, subjects in the first man. The early Christian painters often made use of the second. The greatest artists of all time were to find the truth, sometimes verging more on one side, sometimes on the other, as the sculptor has done in this. I thought, now uh, hindsight, that actually what happened with that season because if you're done by Tim Thompson, you can write that and just say that to the property of Thompson. That's, that's what I write very much about. And I must say, when I went back and read that, it gave me the encouragement I needed to move along the night. It was the fever hospital. It's now Mount Carmel. Well, I think Mount Carmel is the name that most people still refer to it as locally, but it's the Phoenix Centre. That's the official name. 